Voyager 2 has been operating for a very long period of time after its initial mission goals were achieved. It was launched more than 45 years ago. It's currently so far away from Earth that it takes 18 hours for radio signals from the spaceship to reach us. NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft made a close flyby of Neptune on August 25, 1989, 33 years ago. It provided the first close-up view of the eighth planet in our solar system for humans. The grand tour of the four major planets of our solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, that the Voyager mission had undertaken, came to a close at this time. Neptune has not been visited subsequently by any other spacecraft. Hi guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today we'll be taking a look at Voyager 2's discovery of Neptune. Make sure to stick till the end of this video as we have a lot to cover. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video, it might help us a long way. Now let's get started. The planet that Voyager 2 discovered appeared to be a bluer version of Jupiter and Saturn wrapped in bands of clouds that were teal and cobalt in colour. Methane is indicated by the blue on Neptune. The great dark spot, like Jupiter's great red spot, was a gigantic storm that was slate coloured. In addition, Voyager 2 found four rings and six additional moons. The engineering team carefully adjusted the probe's direction and speed during the encounter so that it could fly by Triton, the planet's largest moon, up close. Geologically, young surfaces and active geysers that were blasting material into the sky were visible during the flyby. This demonstrated that Triton was more than just an immovable piece of ice. Despite having the coldest surface temperature of any natural body that Voyager could have detected, 391 degrees Fahrenheit. The Voyager interstellar mission officially began after the Neptune flyby. A whopping 45 years after the launches, Voyager 2 and its identical twin Voyager 1, which had previously passed by Jupiter and Saturn, are still reporting back from the far limits of our solar system. Voyager 2 was 4.7 billion kilometers from Earth at the time of the Neptune encounter. We're currently separated by 12 billion miles. Voyager 1 is 14 billion miles away from Earth and is traveling faster than it. Five planetary encounters had been finished by the Voyager mission team by the time Voyager 2 arrived in Neptune. However, the particular problems faced by the vast blue world remained. The distance between the Sun and Neptune is around 30 times that of Earth, so the amount of sunlight that the icy giant receives is only 0.001 times that of Earth. Longer exposure times were necessary for Voyager 2's camera to capture decent photographs of such dim light. However, the spacecraft would travel at its fastest relative speed, which is roughly 60,000 miles per hour. The image would get hazy with an extended exposure duration. Consider attempting to capture a photograph of a roadside sign while driving at a high speed. Therefore, during the near approach, the crew set Voyager 2's thrusters to fire gently. By doing so, the spacecraft rotates to maintain the camera's focus on its target without changing the direction or overall speed of the spacecraft. Because of the distance, Voyager 2's radio signals were weaker when they finally reached Earth compared to prior flybys. But time was on the spacecraft's side. Through the Deep Space Network or DSN, which makes use of several radio antennas, the Voyagers interact with Earth. They are at Goldstone, California, Canberra, Australia and Madrid, Spain. The three largest DSN antennas were 64 meters wide during Voyager 2's flyby with Uranus in 1986. The DSN increased the dishes to 70 meters to help with the Neptune encounter. They also used neighboring non-DSN antennas such as a second 64 meter dish in Parks, Australia to gather data. Likewise, the very large array in New Mexico has several 25 meter antennas. Engineers could hear Voyager clearly thanks to the effort. The amount of data that may reach Earth in a particular time frame was also increased. The spacecraft can now transmit back more images from the flyby as a result. At NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, which oversees the Voyager program, the atmosphere was electric in the week leading up to that close encounter in August 1989. Voyager crew workers gathered around computer monitors across the lab to watch as photos captured by Voyager 2 during its approach to Neptune travel to Earth four hours later. Stone stated, the absence of the internet, which would have enabled the entire team and the entire globe to view the photographs at once, is one of the aspects that set the Voyager planetary contacts apart from missions conducted today. Only a small number of locations provided the photographs in real time. However, the group was dedicated to providing updates to the public as soon as feasible. 
They would therefore present their findings to the public every day from August 21st to August 29th during news briefings. Voyager All Night was a program that aired regular updates from the probe's near contact with the planet on August 24th at 4 a.m. GMT. That's 9 p.m. in California on August 24th. Vice President Dan Quayle visited the lab the following morning to command the Voyager team. Chuck Berry performed that evening at JPL Celebration of the Achievement. His song Johnny Be Good was featured on the golden record that went with both Voyagers. Naturally, the Voyagers' accomplishments extended far beyond that momentous week more than three decades ago. The heliosphere, the protective bubble around the planets made by a fast-moving flow of particles and magnetic fields emitted outward by our sun, has been left behind by both probes as they have now entered into stellar space. The weather and conditions in this area, which is populated by the remains of stars that have burst elsewhere in our galaxy, are being reported back to Earth by them. They have made the first shaky foray into the cosmic void where no previous operational probes have ventured. Also, Voyager data support other missions, including the NASA's Interstellar Border Explorer IBEX, which remotely senses the boundary where solar particle collisions with galactic material occur. And to make use of the Voyager observations, NASA is getting ready to launch the Interstellar Mapping and Acceleration Probe IMAP in 2024. With transmitters that have the power of 13 watts, or roughly the same as a refrigerator light bulb, the Voyagers communicate their discoveries back to the DSN antennas. Added stone, they go places every day that have never been explored by human probes. They've been exploring for a long time. On the other hand, Voyager 2 observed Uranus closely between November 4, 1985 and February 25, 1986. On January 25, 1986, the spacecraft came within 81,500 kilometers of the planet's cloud tops, which was its closest approach. The spacecraft brought back more than 7,000 images of the planet, its ring and moons. Two new rings and 11 new moons were also found. Additionally, information about the atmosphere and peculiar magnetic field of the planet was provided by Voyager 2's equipment. After that, the spaceship launched itself toward a final planetary destination, Neptune, using Uranus as a launch pad. Conducted up-close surveys of the planet from June 5th to October 2nd, 1989, traveling as close to 5,400 kilometers above the eighth planet's North Pole on August 25th. It also observed Triton, the largest moon of Neptune, which it explored last while traveling along its path. Voyager 2 captured more than 9,000 photos of Uranus during its exploration, including the planet, its atmosphere, its black rings and its moons. Additionally, six new moons were found. The spacecraft assisted in the discovery that Neptune, like Uranus, had a unique magnetic field that was tilted 47 degrees from the planet's axis and far from the planet's center. NASA engineers began preparing more than 45 years ago for the potential that an extraterrestrial civilization could discover the spacecraft. Similar to Voyager 1, Voyager 2 is equipped with a gold-plated record that holds data about Earth as well as recordings of sounds, music, and greetings in 55 different languages. The record's playback instructions were also added by the engineers. And that ends our episode. We hope that you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and leave a comment down below with your own thoughts and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.